Hello and welcome back to another episode of Grow Support. My name is Neil and I had the pleasure of sitting down with Alex Plaskett to talk about his journey into support leadership. Alex is a member support manager at Patient whose mission is to help those access and afford healthcare. Alex has been a support leader for nearly two years and has had the honor of guiding a team of nine support champions, as he calls them. He is passionate about helping his team to be the best and to grow in their own careers. He aims to teach his team how to look at the what and the why of when members reach out to resolve their concerns and holistically and empathetically. Let's get into it. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Hey, Neil. I'm doing really well. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, it's super, super happy to have you. I mean, we uh, we we talked for a long time. Yes. How are uh, how are things uh, in general for you? It's been a busy 2024 so far. Um, one could say it's felt like six months already, but it's kind of wild that the quarter one is almost ramping up here in a bit too. Yeah, uh, things are things are really moving and grooving for the year. I uh yeah I, it, it's been a, it's been a year so far and it's only in March. <laughs> yeah, and it's the weather's starting to get a little bit nicer too. Here where I'm at in the southeast United States, I'm I'm looking forward to some more sunshine as well. Nice. So you're from southeast uh, United States. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Where are you from? How did you get into support? Yeah. So specifically from Georgia and outside the Atlanta area. And I have been in support for about two years being the manager of the team. And then specifically fall of 2021 is when I started as in the support world itself. But you could you could argue that I've kind of always been in it. I started out in the education world, um, working with kids with special needs, and then worked my way into the service industry and food service, and then worked in the dental office. So every step along the way has kind of brought me to where I am now, I think. Nice. Uh, every single person, I always say this every single time too, it's just like every single person I talk to comes from a very different support background. And I love hearing like where you actually come from and that journey and like where you, how you got here in the first place, because it brings such a different perspective into how you approach support and what you do as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I think specifically from the education and dental office world, I, I feel like that kind of gives me the empathy and understanding working with different kids and their families too. And then you, you see that opportunity that you have to make a difference. I was just at the front desk working at the receptionist and then worked my way to um, treatment coordinator and insurance coordinator. And that's where I was able to see like how this really does affect families, especially when you're talking about sensitive topics such as money um, but yeah. otherwise I, I think that really helped prepare me and help lead my team to this day too because I, I see all those transfers and correlations there yeah that's uh <laughs> this is very interesting just being able to connect the dots and to be able to bring those in exactly nice and how did you end up you mentioned that you just recently uh not necessarily just recently but a few years ago also stepped into this manager role uh, how's that transition been for you yeah so i think a little bit of how that came to be is as, as i said started out as a support rep at patient or member support representative is what we like to call us i also like to call us the support champions <laughs> Um, since we are, you know, helping that member experience. And uh, along the way, it, I would say it kind of fell, fell upon me. I was in the right place at the right time, so to speak, but that would be kind of selling myself short. But ultimately, I was trying to get it as involved as possible. I realized there, as we were, it was a formative time at a patient when we were growing. And I was realizing there was things that we needed. We needed documentation. We needed better resources to be able to assist our members. We needed product improvements. So I also just got in, involved as I possibly could. I, I kind of jokingly say the extrovert in me and my first remote role needed the opportunity to meet more people as well and kind of get that social need filled. But it was an opportunity to get involved in different task forces and how our company operations worked and allowed me to meet a lot of people within our group and have that opportunity to show that I could be ready to to be trusted with the team too. 
is. It's so like I find getting involved is always the very first step, especially in a very small growing company as well, where you there is a lot of opportunity. And people sometimes if they really do want to grow, really dig into it are like, oh yeah, here's an opportunity, here's an opportunity, let me let me get my hands in here. You get in a lot of buckets and then you become that trusted advisor as well. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you think getting involved has impacted the way that you kind of have grown your team and taken on that responsibility? Yeah, I think it really helps me work most in like a cross-functional capacity with the other team, like working with marketing to making sure our messaging aligns, working with the product team to make sure everything that we need makes sense with what the members are asking about and their feedback so mm -hmm. that we continue to work even more efficiently and also help them have a better experience too. And I, but yeah, ultimately, I, th I think it just gives me that opportunity to understand the business as a whole too. So when I'm asking for help or questions, I know how it aligns with them. So it, it's a little more, it, it fits better. You can see both sides of the coin and kind of really see, okay, this is going to be really good for our customers. It's going to be really good for our business. This is perfect. And understand what will work and what, what hasn't. Exactly. But growing from that role and really being able to grow your team, are there any specific challenges that you've faced along the way? Yes. I, I think kind of, especially at the beginning, it was a lot of, I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> and to yeah. be honest with you, this was the second time I've ever run a team. And the first time was not really a great experience. It was just in, in, in the food service industry. It was just a different um, circumstance. So I, I, a lot of what I had to work through initially was kind of my own confidence building from, from the previous position, realizing it's not the same, it's different. I mean, um, so I had to look, break down that, I think, from the beginning as, as well and had to work on my own confidence and realize, like, I, I am here. I was chosen for this um, because X, Y, Z, because they saw something in me to be able to help this team take it to the next stage um, from our early stage into, like, we'll call it our from our crawling stage to our fast walking stage here, if you will. And, you know, now we're working on the, you know, full out jog here. But I, I think a lot of that was giving myself permission to say, like, I'm, I'm here for a reason. And I'm entrusted with, with this team to grow. Um, and, and from there, we, we are in that unique period of growth, trying to get to the, you know, jogging stage, if you will, to, a, you know, marathons or, you know, full out sprint. Um, and in that growth, we, we practically doubled our team and even more so doubled our support volume. So looking into that next phase of kind of still pulling on that, I don't know what I don't know, which has been really helpful, like talking to you and other folks from support driven, being able to know like what stage they're in and how I can utilize that. So that that's kind of a, a both my own confidence, if you will, and learning along the way with that. Hmm. You, you mentioned really, settling into your confidence and really kind of getting into that and growing into that how is there anything practical that you did to help build that confidence to help you get past that barrier that's a great question i i think a lot of it was just giving myself and the, my own team the permission that it is going to be a certain way I, I i think about feedback specifically being one of the things that i was growing in confidence about i telling them made it my own permission, so to speak, like, hey, I'm going to give you feedback because I want you to grow and I want our members to have a better time and better experience. If I don't do that, I'm hurting you and I'm hurting them. So in a way, I was kind of setting the stage and expectation of how things are going to be to also give myself that permission. So that's one like one strategy. And then additionally, it's just been talking to people at my company, talking to people in my network, and then my number one HR cheerleader, my spouse, um, being able to like just have a lot of help in that um, in those communities to talk about the ways that I have been growing. I, I think it is the the village approach in that regard that helped me a lot. Nice, and getting that support system from the community and being yeah. able to collaborate in that sense as well. Yes, and I'm not not alone. You know that that's the thing that was one of the challenges too first starting out as a as a leader I, 
you know, I had my direct manager, but I didn't have anyone next to me, so to speak. Um, so that was a transition in and of itself. Oh, neither did I. That's exactly why I started Girls Support in the first place. <laughs> started really reaching out to the community. You, you mentioned something about feedback that I really love. Uh, and that something that I always kind of also learned along the way was that, you know, giving feedback is is great and it's good. And the more you give it, and if you give it in the right way, it can really, really help. At the same time, if you don't give feedback and you don't give yourself that permission, what you mentioned, it doesn't help anybody in that scenario. And I think that's really important to keep in mind because some people, they think, oh, I don't want to, you know, push uh, people, I don't, it's not my place or something like that, maybe as they're transitioning into this role. Um, but one, it is your place. Two, uh, if you don't give it to them, they don't understand if they're doing well or need to make adjustments or know where they're at anyways. And then that's always an yes. ambiguous place as well. Yes, and I think like a, a way to put that even more poignantly is I, I had an old supervisor way back in the day that said if you say nothing you give it silent permission mm. and i i remind myself of that all the time because it could be oh it's fine no oh, it's it might not be fine especially like you said like if they don't have the feedback they don't know um and that ultimately is going to be more painful when it gets more of a problem potentially and then you have to have a bigger conversation when it could have just been something from the beginning and that's still something that I wrestle with because I, I think if if you're familiar with the Enneagram, um, I do believe that I am a nine, the peacemaker, if you will, who likes everyone to get along and not a lot of fighting or confrontation. So it is kind of a big learning moment to kind of almost go against that, if you will. Yeah, I really challenge yourself to push through it and and also learn. One of the one of the big things that I face as well is like needing to push through that and and be able to say, hey. We're going to make adjustments now so that we don't need to make larger adjustments or uncertainty in the future kind of you're by giving feedback uh, already you're setting yourself up to not have to answer the question of why is this happening to me or something like that in the mm -hmm. future because it's already clear why things are where you're going there's a clear expectation yeah and it's a trust building too and something that i, I try to do at least every six months or so is check in with the team and be like, hey, is the way that I'm giving you feedback good? It's like, do you want, how do you want to hear it? Do you want the, you know, the sandwich? Like the, you know, good thing, thing to work on, reminder of the good thing kind of, or like, you just want me to tell you like it is. Um, Cause that, that, like I said, with the permission, that's even more permission. They're asking for you to be blunt or straightforward or delicate. You know, and then they can, they have the, the, the right to change that when they're ready too. They're like, okay, I don't need that delicate. Tell me like it is. Um, so yeah. I think that's something that's important too, because that's just part of what I think about building trust in general with the team. I had an interview and I had somebody and one of the questions that I asked is like, how do you like to receive feedback uh, yeah. in the interview? So I can already kind of gauge what this person is like and what they like to do and how they like to communicate. And they gave the answer, you know, I want like, you know, the sandwich feedback. Yeah, I want the sandwich without the top bun. Just, just take it out. <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought it was perfect. Uh, just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, okay. just give it to me, and then you know, tell me how it is. <laughs> yeah, I, um, if you can adapt to that, I think that's just really important for each each individual, especially as as we're growing. I've never had the nine people before. Um, you know, I started out with about five, and. So each each individual has their own story, their own journey along the way, and that's the exciting part to me as well. Being being their leader is being able to help them grow as well. Hmm. How do you like you you've grown yourself over the past years and into the role that you're in now? And you mentioned now helping them to grow. How are you fostering that culture of growth within your team? Yeah. Um, Something that was very important for me is learning about support driven and joining the community of, of individuals that are all working towards support. So that's step one is getting them in there too. It's kind of been a little bit of a slow process. Step two is helping them find like, hey, what, what talks or fireside chats do you want to go to? Um, what are you interested? And then we're, we're going from, from there too. Um, the, one of the most specific things that I was able to, to help my team with this year is working on the scaling within our team too. So now that we're growing, we had that opportunity to focus on like the tier one, tier two um, with our es different escalations. So if, 
being able to take, I have two of my team members doing that now, and it, it was really a wonderful opportunity to be able to recognize that with them, say like, here's why I think that we can move you to this level, and here's what I can expect as well going forward, and then kind of asking them what they would like as well. Like, do you want to keep growing, or do, we, do you want to keep working and fostering where we're at right now? And then another thing that I'm looking at too is support operations or just in general like our day-to-day -day needs and taking one of my team members interests there and really trying to work with them to get that to be something that could grow into whatever it needs to be one day so i, I think ultimately finding people's interests and because that's something that my direct manager is saying too like you have to align like the business need plus people's interests and that's a really good sweet spot um in general we we, we also talk about like coaching of calls or chats, like how can we handle different situations? You know, I can give as many examples as I can with my demeanor and how I take calls, but then I get to learn a lot from, from them too. Um, we, we always are looking at like, how did we address their problems and concerns? Like even down to like, how was your tone? Like, were you in their corner? Um, so I, I think those are some also really great opportunities that work on of course, communication skills and making making us grow to where wherever we go next or wherever my team is going next, like whether it's at, on my team specifically or in within the company or somewhere else, like I'm hoping I can prepare them the best I can to be able to, to go wherever they would like. Hmm. It's a really good way because you're setting them up to grow into something that they're passionate about. They're motivated mm -hmm. to move in that direction. It's something that the business needs. Exactly. Uh, and really be able to help foster getting them into a position where they feel also intrinsically motivated to move in that direction. Indeed. You, you mentioned a couple of times community and joining support driven and finding people there that can support you as well. Is that how you get support for your current role or what kind of avenues do you get support for your growth as a, as a manager and as a leader? Yeah, that's, you, I kind of hinted at the, the village approach, if you will, especially helping my, my formative growth here. Um, that is a really big opportunity or um, event in, in my career to have joined that because I got to meet folks like you and then other wonderful, fantastic people in the support driven community that helped me realize like I'm, I'm not alone. Like we have other people that are asking these same questions. Um, I'm able to talk to my my direct manager about these things as well. And then I mentioned my my my, my secret um, entity here of my HR professional um, spouse who also is a great resource and has provided me with some valuable um, feedback as well and, and anything that I'm thinking about. Nice. It, really building that, that collection, collective mindset and uh, community so that you can get the support and grow as well. Exactly. Over the past couple of years that you've grown in this direction and learned from the community and, and all of these things, is there any piece of advice that you have for somebody who's starting out as a support manager or as a lead that might help them early on? Yeah, I think for, for myself, the I don't didn't know what I didn't know, and that that's an okay place to be, and you, you have to start somewhere. And I I think in those situations, more quickly trying to surround yourself with folks that are in a similar situation. Um, also, just accept that, especially if you hadn't managed a team before, um, just asking them like what they think would be helpful. Like, because that's ultimately, you're you're not working for them, but you're working with them and to help them. Um, I, I see it as like the opportunity that you're not, you know, you're not like a overlord, if you will, but you you are their guide. You are like the leader to help them move from one place to another. And that that's the exciting part. I think understanding who you're working with and like what 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 their needs are it's a great place to start because then if you're like i don't know how to do that then you know how to ask more specific questions to your direct report or your community for guidance on that mm. 
there's this really great analogy that I heard. What you mentioned, you know, you're not their dictator and kind of really drilling them. There's a really great analogy that I saw, uh, which is a tugboat versus the light lighthouse mm -hmm. uh, in terms of being a leader. You either need to, if you're a tugboat, you're pulling people along with you and you're dragging them uh, across, you know, trying to really, really get them to move. Uh, but if you're a lighthouse, you're a beacon for people to, for them to really come in and, and be motivated to guided towards and you're that supportive uh, yeah. aspect as well. It really reminded me of that because what you mentioned, like you're there to support them. You're also there to guide them and to help them uh, and be that beacon for them uh, in a sense as well. And you don't know how to do that unless you talk to them and <laughs> learn how to support them the best as well. I, that's, that's a, that's a uh, very relevant visual. Um, that's, that's one of our like company values is like lighting the way and mm. the, the lighthouse is a, is a, is a nice relevant visual, I, I believe as well for that. Um, and I, that makes me think of too, when you were saying Neil about the, the tugboat versus the lighthouse, I, I think of it visually as well of like a, a lighthouse is higher up, like literally. So you can look out and see what's going on too. And I, I think that's another thing that I was learning is my, my job is not to be in the trenches, you know, like as tempting as it is, as much as I want to be down on the ground with my team to help them through things, ultimately it's better for me to kind of be looking from a different perspective. I think maybe that's the better way of saying it instead of higher up, if you will, but being able to look and see like when things are being wild and tumultuous, like my job is to like say okay you y'all need to take your place over here take your stand over here i'm going to be looking for what's ahead to warn y'all and help prepare y'all when we get to it um but i i think and i hope that ultimately when i do i, I think the willingness to be down on the ground with them i think is important so they they know that i care and it, plus it helps me have their perspective and see what they're saying too but overall like I, to add on to that visual, I think that's because uh, that that also reminds me. I don't think a tugboat would be delegating too, if you. <laughs> um, it's trying to just get the job done anyway. Um, but I think that's a that's a great visual. Yeah, and that's an interesting perspective looking at it that way of really looking forward further into the future as well. I think, especially if your team just feels like they're reacting and getting pushed, and changes are happening all the time. If you're not looking ahead, you can't plan for those things and prepare them for what's to come down the road. And then exactly. it feels very like these things are happening to me and not we're contributing towards that larger picture, which you as a leader contribute to uh, being able to help them foster that growth. Yeah, and that's what I, I feel like there's a lot of talks right now too about support in general going more proactive versus reactive. And I think that would also help the team feel in a better place to take care of anything that kind of surprises us along the way too. I love that. That's uh that's a really good perspective and thank you for sharing it. Of course. Um I have one last question. Always the standard ending question. <laughs> I think people are used to it by now if they're listening. Um is there one thing we've talked a lot about what you've learned as a leader and as you've grown and this piece of advice, but for you personally, is there anything that you've learned over the course of your career, not necessarily just in support, but overall that you still hold to today? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, if I may slightly borrow from one of my previous supervisor's thoughts as well, is compassion is always the right answer. Um, wherever you can, provided that's uh, adhering to your industry's regulations, um, that's always the right answer with talking to your members, um, dealing with inner workings of your team, wherever you can. That's, I think that's my, the thing that I hold to most is the compassion and like understanding that like life happens and we are humans, but how can we learn from it? So I think ultimately that's the, that's where I stand is trying to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. Mm. I, I resonate with that a lot. Uh, really being able to understand and you know, empathize with what's going on, being able to recognize that it's not just, hey, the work that needs to be done, this just needs to get done, but also the the person behind it and keeping that human to human interaction yeah. 
experience is especially important, especially if you're thinking about it in a digital environment of, you know, you don't see what's going on behind the screen. Yes. Uh, you don't know what's happening there. I love yeah. it. And, and everyone has their different stories. And my, the last thought too is, you know, if my team is not in a good place, like they won't be able to help the members be in a good place. So I think ultimately that's my true passion, if you will, is like, I know the members are going to get taken care of if my team is prepared and they feel taken care of and safe and secure too. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your, your journey into management and, and learning along the way uh, and everything that you've gathered in your approach as well. I think it's super interesting and, and lovely to hear. Awesome. Thank you so much, Neil. I really appreciate it. It's been an honor to join you today. Thanks. Thank you.